The hardest part for this class for most people is just getting started. Where do you begin? How do you do it? All right, well, I've given you an example that I've put up describing what I want you to put into lab one. I've given you a link, so what I really recommend that you do is that you look at my sample, which is out at mary.mccdgm.net and if you get really bored I have the other classes as well. So this is where I'm starting. You can see I'm early in putting the class together and my sample video is starting out with text. Now how would I go about doing this homework assignment? Let's take a look. This is lots of different types and it says for lab one create a document that is four to five paragraphs long. Use it to introduce yourself to the class. Make sure to properly set up the code and use all the text formatting techniques listed in this page. Well, step one, and I'm going to tell you right now there's good arguments for both Chrome and Firefox. I like them both. I like the web tools in Firefox. I've downloaded a lot of plugins and add-ons, and they're really handy. I actually recommend that you do some of the same things. So if you're interested, and I'll put links into the course, but if you just search for Firefox plugins web, there's all sorts of add-ins in Firefox, and I think that this is incredibly useful and will help you a lot. My favorite is Firebug, but they have web developer and all sorts of um, Firefox add-ons. So if you choose add to Firefox, it'll add it and install it and then you can tell it to restart. So I'm gonna go ahead and have Firefox restart. Okay, so I've got all sorts of cool, cool tools here and I'm gonna go back to mary.mccdgm.net. By the way, I hope that you're a familiar web user, but you'll notice I have all my common to, um, things that I use a lot, so this will tell you a little bit about me. Mostly I'm using my computer for work, but I like to listen to Pandora radio when I'm not recording and you can add by choosing bookmark this page and you can put it in the bookmark menu or you can put it in the bookmark toolbar. Now I have my stuff that I use all the time in my bookmark toolbar which has gotten a little out of hand so you can see I have lots of stuff including all sorts of things I'm following. So my toolbar has gotten too big for this which is okay I use it a lot. Um, and then when you go to my class, if you did not download the web developer tools, you can just right click and you can choose view page source and that's going to show you exactly what my code looks like. And this is the top level page, that's not actually what I want you to look at, so we'll go here and then we'll do view page source. And so this shows you what's here. Now you'll notice that it's going to give you an error here with the paragraph here and here. I probably should have closed my paragraph heading here. When I'm grading your work, I actually grade it in Firefox so that I can see if there are any errors. So this is a typo here. It works. I wouldn't take off points for it, but this helps you make better formatted code if you check this. You can check it on your computer too by right clicking and opening in your computer. But they also have sorts of cool tools here. I can validate my HTML. It's going to check. I have one error and this is my error right here that the P tag is not in scope. So this will help you find errors as well. and it has, it'll let you view the source, which is pretty much, oh, this is not the page, I don't want it for this page, I want to go back, basic text. I can hit view source right here, does the same thing as the other one does, it just puts it right up here in the corner. Now, this is my most useful view, and I, there's all sorts of things I do with, um, Firefox that has Firebug and lots of other tools that you're going to see me using later. 
So you'll see that I'm using the tools in Firefox. There are similar or almost identical tools in Chrome. Just to keep things simple, I'm going to be using the same one throughout. Now that I've got what it looks like, what my code is, I'm going to open up Optana. And so my index page here in folder one, and each folder is going to be a project. And it seems a little crazy at first when I start doing this that my I've created a folder for just one file. It's going to make a lot more sense in the next few projects because as I do projects, I usually am adding multiple pages. Ultimately, you're going to end up with at least two files for every project and normally five, six, ten or more because you'll want to put all the images in the folder. You're going to have an external cascading style sheet and at some point we're even going to get into a little bit of JavaScript which we can do externally. So you're going to name yours index. I'm going to do pretty much your homework assignment. I'm just going to call it lab one here, though you should name it index and put it in the file. So what I'm going to start, and where you should start, is you should right click and you should choose new file, or you might find it better to do new from template, HTML, and you want to do HTML5. And I'm going to call mine lab01. And I'm going to put it in my own one folder. Now I'm doing this because I've already created an index.html that I don't want to get rid of. Yours should actually be named index.html. And I'm going to hit finish. Now this actually puts in a lot of stuff that you don't always need. So sometimes it's better to start on your own and it actually doesn't hurt I think this is actually a bit overkill. I mean, you can do this and it has everything you need in it. Um, but we don't need everything. We don't need the favicon stuff. So I'm going to clear out the stuff that I don't actually need. And I'm going to leave in the stuff that's useful. This isn't a bad idea to leave that in. Not really necessary, but okay. So you really need the title. I'm just going to simplify this. This isn't a bad idea, but I'm going to keep it as simple as possible. And what I typically do when I'm doing homework like this is I set up a basically a template file for myself so that I know that I have things set up the right way. And so, well, we'll use some of these things. This is really your template. I'm going to put in some blank lines here. You don't need them. But I'm also going to put in a comment. Okay. So this is how you do a comment, and that's just information to yourself because someday you may come back and wonder why you did things this way. It's just helping you. It's ignored by the browsers. This is information for you. Now this is actually a template that you might choose to save. And it's not a bad idea, and so I'm going to choose File, Save As, and I'm going to put it in Web 115, and I'm going to call it template.html, and that way from now on, whenever I want to go start something, I can close this here. I can go to template and I can choose, I don't want to use that one, I can choose um, copy and I can go into here and I can choose paste and then I can rename this. And so I could call it lab01 B again, this would be index view.html. And I can delete this because I don't need it. Okay, so this is pretty much if you create this template, this is where you start. And this is important because this has all the key elements that you need in every web page, and I'm going to be looking for these. 
Every page we're working in HTML5 starts with doc type HTML. Then we say that it's an HTML page and we have an opening and a closing tag for HTML. You'll notice it also, also announces our language as English and when I hover over it, it tells me that it's the language code for the content of the element. And that's a good thing to do. It's a usability issue. You should announce that it's, we're using English. Then we have our head information. The only part of this that actually appears visually is the lab 01, which is fine for a title on this, and that would appear in the tab in your browser. And then we have the head ends, the body begins, and this is where the content would go. Now it's not a bad idea. I'm going to open up another Firefox window. And I'm going to actually not the easiest way. Usually you can go into file and find it. I think the easiest way for me to do this here is to go into my web 11501 and just right click here where it says lab 01b and choose open with Firefox. And you'll see here it says lab 1 but there's nothing else going on which is fine. I'm just going to, you'll notice this is going to my C drive that's where my file is saved and I'm going to refer back to this because this is actually how I'm going to test things. Now you can test things when you save them. You can test them in here by hitting preview which works just fine but I like to see how it really looks in the browser. Alright so now let's take a look. I have a bunch of stuff that I need to create in here. So this is the sample code that's telling you what you have to do. So we're going to compare. We've got the doc type HTML language equals English. We've got our head tag. We've also got the content, um, the author. You can put this in or not. Your first name's enough for this class. It's okay if you leave that one out too. And then we've got the body. And in here we're supposed to do a... I can hide that. We're supposed to create a document that's four to five paragraphs long. Use it to introduce yourself to the class. Make sure to properly set up the code. Use all the formatting techniques. Well, I've got a couple formatting techniques which I haven't used because there's H1 through H6, but I'm really looking for you to use H1 to it as your first title. And the reason that we do that is because on the web, H1 is used by search engines and when you're working for search engines it's called search engine optimization and it looks for whatever's in the H1 tag to say what the page is about. So I'm just going to put in web 115 homework lab 01 text and that describes what the page is about. And if I was really antsy as far as to what it's doing, and honestly, the more frequently you test things, the better off you're going to be. Because you'd rather look for a needle in four or five pieces of hay than a needle in a haystack. So that's fine, because we're not getting into making it pretty yet. Pretty comes next week. We're just getting content on the screen. So that's fine for a start. Okay, so I'm going to want to put in several paragraphs. So I'm going to put in, and I expect you to write a little bit more than me. I just think that it's boring for you guys to watch me type. And so I'm going to start in my paragraph. I'm going to use the bold tag and I'm going to put in Mary's epic journey through life. Yes, I am quite a bit of a ham. Okay, and then I'm going to keep talking about myself a little bit. Mary started I probably should put an exclamation point here. Mary started programming when, and you can hit enter here, it doesn't matter, it's not going to show up on screen, and you should do this to make it easy for you to read. She was only nine years old. 
Mary fell in love with programming and started taking classes when she was in seventh grade. Now what I find is the easiest thing for this particular assignment is to type your content, then go back and format it. So I can do, um, we've got bold in here. And so let's say I want to bold when I she was only nine years old. So this one we're going to try with emphasis. And then I can move that over here. Or maybe a little bit further. Okay, so at this point I'm going to save and I can test it here. I got to be honest with you, I hate the size of this font. I'm going to put some styling in here because I can't resist. <sighs> All right, so. Um, I'm going to add a to my paragraph to add style font stop I'm sorry style equals font size and I'm going to say for 14 PX. And let's make sure this works. I'm going to save this. Okay, and it didn't work. And that's okay because I'm trying to do something off the top of my head that isn't working. So my favorite resource, um, inline style font size. My favorite resource is Google. Um, so if you want to do something I haven't shown you, Google it. So we're going to do HTML style CSS um, inline body style equals background color. Oh, I should see this should have worked styles equals quote colon. Oh, I did spacing wrong. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to look at Optana. And I'm going to go back into here because I do have style equals. Now I shouldn't have the space here and I shouldn't have the space here. And let's take a quick look here. It's got the, it's actually a CSS style, which I'm using. So I'm sort of taking a little bit ahead. Color blue, margin width, 20 pixels. Okay. Let's take a quick look save this, see if that fixed it. Nope. It's ignoring it. Sometimes, let's take a look, let's compare. HTML styles. So let's see what I'm doing. P style equals, yeah, that's fine. Font size. And maybe I was supposed to do this in quotes. I don't think so. It should have just been 20 pixels. There we go. Font family for Dana. Font family. Font size 20 pixels. Nope, see, no quotes. So I did it right. And that, so it always concerns me when I am doing something right. And Google knows everything. So style font dash size colon 20 px font dash size 14 px semicolon okay so i did that right and sometimes i'm finding and this is why i like firefox out here so i'm showing you the actual process which is a little tedious but i think it's honest to show you that i don't know everything um so i'm going to go back out to firefox here lab one and to see what's happening i hit refresh I can't tell if that's a 14 size font or not. Let's make it larger. Let's make this a little bit outrageous too. Let's make it 24. That'll be obvious. So I'm going to save. 
and I'm going to preview. Oh, okay, so 14 was just not that big. So, all right, I need a space after my exclamation point there. So I can put my space on either side of the bold. And I think 20 is a little bit big, so we're going to say, or 24 is, so we're going to say 20. We're going to save, we're going to view, and I'm okay with that, and I'm okay with that too. All right, so you'll see this is the way I really work. I try something and then I test it. So I thought it wasn't working. It really was working. I just didn't make the change big enough to see it. Okay, so I've done that. And this, this is what's called a cascading style sheet or a style because years ago they separated HTML, which is the content you see from CSS, cascading style sheets, so the styles were separate. Now we're going to get into doing it where you style the whole page, but here you can just style a paragraph. And here's where I end my paragraph. So you see I've got a bunch of nested elements. Now elements are the beginning and ending tag and everything in between. So here's your title element. The HTML element is actually the whole page here with other things nested in it. The head element is nested inside it, the body element, and then we can nest things inside of the paragraphs. So I'm going to add a new paragraph. And we're going to do this one as strong. Mary goes to college. And then in the same paragraph, I'm going to keep it in the same paragraph, but I'm going to put in a break. And a break doesn't need, it's basically empty or self-closing. And this is going to create a new line. And so in the break tag, I'm going to put Mary started college at McHenry County College when she was 18 years old. She then married and had two kids before returning to MCC at 23. When Mary was 25, she realized how much she loved programming and transferred to Rockford College. University. It was Rockford College when I went to Rockford University now to pursue a degree in computer science. True story. I really went to MCC and that's why I came back to teach here because I love it. Okay, so again, we can start adding some things in here. So I'm going to go back and look at my code. and see some of the things I'm supposed to use. So I've used strong. I haven't used italics. So we'll put that around McHenry County College. And we'll do it again here, except for italics here. We're going to use, I've already done emphasis, so We've done bold, we've done strong, we've done emphasis. Let's do um, superscript. SUP. And you would keep going and you'd do three or four paragraphs and you just keep adding things in this way. Now you can, if you wish, add in a ordered list. Now, it didn't like it when I put this all as part of one paragraph. One of the bad things is I've been programming since um, web pages since 1997, and sometimes I've got some bad habits to unlearn from the way that things used to be done that are not really the way they're supposed to be done in HTML5. So I'm going to do it the correct way this time. So I'm going to put a paragraph, 
and I'm going to put in, um, though actually, I don't even think I want to do a paragraph here. I showed you that we had header one. I'm going to do an H3 here, header three, uh, programming languages Mary knows. And so here I'm going to use the list. And if you do, you can choose between an unordered and an ordered list. You'll see OL here, that stands for ordered list. I'm going to do a UL, unordered list, basically bulleted. And I like to hit enter here and tab in and have everything neatly organized. So I have a list item. I'm going to say I know Java, which I do, HTML. Now, this is kind of goofy. Is HTML programming language? Eh, not really. This isn't one either. Why is it not a programming language? In my mind, it's a formatting language. It's a data description language. If it doesn't have if then else in it, to me, it's not really programming. I also know COBOL, haven't used it in years. It's sort of a dead language. Um, I know JavaScript, use that all the time. C++, of course. ActionScript. And the one I'm working on these days, Objective-C. Because I'm learning to program for iPhones to make apps. So that's pretty much what your homework assignment would be. Now I'd like you to have a couple more paragraphs, but you can see I'm going back and forth and I'm testing things and I'm looking things up online. And so I'll save it here and I'll test it here. And it still looks a little small here, but when I test it on my Firefox browser, I'm actually pretty okay with that. Now I didn't include everything you're supposed to include, but it shows you how I work. Now the next step is how the heck do I get it uploaded? Well, there's a separate tutorial. Um, I'm using Core FTP. You can go see the separate tutorial, but I'm gonna put it right in here. I'm not going to install it. I've got Core installed and it's not in my shortcut menu. So using Windows 8, I'm just gonna do a quick search for it. Core FTP. Now Core FTP Lite, which is the version I'm using, is free and it works really well. And I obviously have been helping some other people up here. Let's change this. The site name for this is Web 115. My FTP is FTP Mary.mccdgm.net. My username is Mary. My password name is none of your business. Gosh, I hope I remember what it was. I've been doing this way too much lately. Um, and FTP, and I'm gonna hit connect and try to connect. Now this is actually a little bit easier in some ways than Dreamweaver. Now on each side, this is what's out on my web server, and everything's in my public HTML folder. So you'll see I have Web 115, Web 105. I'm working on lots of dis different classes. You may or may not have done Web Fundamentals first, so you might have already used the server. Okay, so then I've got on this side, I gotta go find it, and I'm going to be in Documents, which is where I'm at, and I should be in Web 115B. Why Web 115B? Well, because I'm doing the same exercise in both Dreamweaver and in Optana. So index exists. Now if I wanted to update it, which I don't need to because they're the same date, I could just click it and send it over. So I'm going to click here, choose lab 01B, and I'm going to hit the arrow here and that moves it over. Now if I were to change computers, say be working at MCC, come home and want to download it, and this was up on the server, if I wanted to bring it back, I just hit the arrow that way and it doesn't matter if I ever write, they should be exactly the same right now. So you can move it either up to the server or down from the server. And this works significantly better than the FTP and Optana right now, so I'm not even showing you how to use that. And so that's it, that would be your assignment. Now the next question is, what's my address? All right, well your address should be, because I'm gonna go out and test this now, I'm gonna go into Firefox, and I really wanna go out to the web because you can see here I'm locally on my desk. This is not what you hand in. What you hand in needs to be 
out on the internet. Well, mine is at mary.mccdgm.net. And if you go to mine, you see I've put links in to go to everything. You're probably not going to do that. If you set yours up the way that I did, and we want to see file structure here. And I want to be in 115. Okay, so this is my path. Now everything is in public HTML, but you don't type that. So I'm in Web 115, that's the top level folder, and then I'm in Web 01 after that. So it's, yours is gonna be your first initial last name, mine's mary.mccdgm.net, that's gonna be the same for you, slash, and I named my top folder Web 115, and then my inner folder for this is lab one. Now if I just do that, that takes me to index, which is what should work for you. I did not name mine index, mine is, and here I can check, sometimes I don't remember, mine is lab01b.html. So I want to call it lab01b.html and hit enter and it's not there. Okay, so now I have to see what did I do wrong? lab01b.html and so I'm going to take a quick check here lab01b.html and I'm in web115 okay what 115 okay I didn't put it in the right folder and that this is common I needed to be in the 01 folder and so I left this up so I can now transfer that over and then I can go up a level here because you should clean up and I can delete that. Yes. So I make mistakes too. Leave it open until you test it. Bingo. It's here. So now this is my path to my file, which I will copy and paste into the um, Canvas site to hand it in. So that's how you should go about doing your homework. Look at the example, view the source code. If you want to do something you don't know how to do, the W3Schools site is my favorite. And when it comes to HTML5, Google knows everything. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time.